Hello friends. Today I thought I'd do an impromptu read of Pika Bonnie Says Eep. And I'm reading it the way well, I'm going to borrow from Taylor Swift. This is Wendy's version of how to read this book. And it's an interactive read if you'd like it to be. Feel free to play this for your classroom or for your children or for yourself. All right. Pika Bunny says Eep. It's a timid pika on a tall mountain who helps a friend discover the courage to say no to a bully. And this book is actually um, recommended and approved by Knox County at School Board. Yeah, it's been approved for years. I just haven't been on the road reading much because of COVID and um, maybe it might be time to start that again this year. I'm not sure. But anyway, here we go. Pika Bunny says Eep. And I wrote this for my friend Mary Alice. Special thanks to Monica and Trish. All right. Those are good friends of mine. Oh, look at this little house. Whose house is that? What do you see in that picture? Let's find out. All right. Pika Bunny stood still and listened and listened. To old Daniel Elderberry grunt and snore. <laughs> For a grizzly bear, old Daniel was generous and wise, and today he smelled like gooseberries and ginger root tea. Are you awake? Old Daniel opened one of his large peepers to see two blue peepers peeping back at him. What is the opposite of love? Asked Pika. Well, Daniel's ears perked up as he opened both eyes to find his green cardigan covered in garnet and gold flowers. He looked back at Pika and smiled. Old Daniel sat up, cleared his throat, <clears throat> and collected most of the flowers before they tumbled to the ground. Who do you think put the flowers on his sweater. Who do you think did that? Well, old Daniel stroked his chin and he thought, meanness? Meanness is where there's no love at all. Oh, Eep, said Pika. Eep was Pika's way of saying no. Is that what bullying is? Old Daniel yawned and thought about how he enjoyed Pika's big questions. Old Daniel took a big sniff of the air and noticed the pine needles sticking out of Pika's soft fur and how Pika smelled of cedar wood. Do we know what's going on? Oh, not yet, I don't think so. Let's see if we can figure it out. Oh, look at that. Before Daniel could ask his own big question, Pika said, thank you, old Daniel. Pika placed the last flower on Daniel's fuzzy sweater and quickly hopped away. So now we know where the flowers came from. That's exciting. All right, here we go. <gasps> Who's that? Ooh! Look at that. There's always a frog hidden in one of my Pika Bunny books. Hop, hop, hop. Pika hopped to the thicket next to the big pond. He knew not to, he knew not to get too close to the water because he had not taken his swimming lessons yet. Oh, Eep. Pika watched Mrs. Waddell hold her head high while making long strokes in the cool water. She sure had courage for such a dainty duck swimming and diving in that deep pond. Pika was standing too far away from her for her to hear him, so he took a deep breath and a little hop closer to the shallow end of the pond and Pika shivered. Don't get too close to the water if you haven't had swimming lessons, Pika Bunny. Oh, look. All right. When Mrs. Waddell swam closer, Pika raised his voice against the breeze. How do you find courage? Mrs. Waddell turned her head and, and, and stared at Pika with one peeper, like a bird does. Why you have to know why you need courage. It helps if you take a deep breath and a big stride forward. Mrs. Waddell thought about how Pika 
always ask big questions. Before she could ask her own big question, Pika said, Thank you, Mrs. Waddell. Pika hopped away before she could offer him a swimming lesson. Hop, 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 hop. Oh, Pika, I don't think he was ready for a swimming lesson today. Oh my goodness, what is going on? Who is that? Who is that? All right. Pika sprung as swiftly as his furry legs would spring. <laughs> he had to get back to the pine needle, clearing at the edge of the cedar forest as fast as he could. Pika scattered the bluebirds, feeding in the meadow. Excuse me, Pika shouted. He raced past his best friend, the red fox, Silas Everclever, without saying a word. He zoomed between his classmates, twin furry gray squirrels, Frizzy and Frazzle Shellshucker. Where is he headed in such a hurry? asked Frizzy. Where is he headed in such a flurry? asked Frazzle. Okay, so do we know what's going on? I don't, I don't know what's going on. He's asking big questions. He's running past his friends. He's full of pine needles. Oh, what's that? What's going on? What is going on? All right. Pika reached the edge of the forest. As he hopped closer, he found Brutus Finkelwink. That muskrat was rubbing his little paws together. He smelled like stinky cheese. Ooh. Ooh. Brutus' dark, beady eyes were fixed on the timid and tiny chameleon Paisley Crayons. Where do you think you're going? asked Brutus. I'm just trying to go home. Oh, look at her. She's holding her math book. She just wants to go home. You think you're so smart carrying that math book around, don't you? Ooh, Brutus. I've got homework. Please let me pass. Not until you show me your magic trick and disappear. Frightened by the muskrat, Paisley tried to blend into the striped brown tree bark and next to the gray rocks and the soggy green moss she was desperately trying to make herself invisible this made pika sad and pika frowned oh brutus being awake <clears throat> what's he up to oh my goodness pika remembered that old daniel and mrs waddell had told him some special things why are you doing that to Paisley? Mind your own beeswax. Pika took a deep breath. And then a hop forward. Eep! Squealed Pika. Remember, eep says no. Eep means no. Bruce looked at Pika and took a step forward. And said <laughs> to Pika. We got drama here. Pika stood still. Paisley blinked and nodded at Pika and then took a deep breath and a small step forward. Eep! Peeked Paisley. Oh, she said her own eep. She was ready to stand up to Brutus. Brutus gave Paisley a smirky grin. Brutus. Paisley took a big step forward. Eep! Hmm. Brutus was stunned by her sudden courage. Brutus backed a big step back away from Paisley. Eep! shouted Silas. Brutus was surprised and turned around to see the fox. Eep! yelled Frizzy and Frazzle. Brutus spun around and saw the twin fuzzy squirrels, all the animal friends, then looked to the sky. Eep! they claimed into the sky. Eep means no, right? Eep answered the bluebirds in the trees. Oh my goodness. And then something happened, something unexpected and kind. Eep, eep, eep echoed from the mountains. The friends turned back to look at Brutus, but the muskrat had slinked away. Paisley, you found your courage. Hooray, shouted the friends. And Pika smiled. And here you can see. Brutus Finkelwink decided he did not want to be friends, and he just walked away. He decided that was enough for him. And then here are all the friends. 
If you've enjoyed Pika Bunny Says Eep, please share and have a great day.